So why am I in this admittedly scenic parking lot? Well, I don't know. It's about time to get pretty real with you guys because today has gone to shit. <laughs> So consider this the dramatic conclusion to our Dolomite series, the fourth video that I did not want to film where everything goes wrong. For those of you who have not been watching though, let me catch you up. You see, I've taken an app-based rental car, which I've used many times before for day trips, on its biggest challenge yet, crossing international borders, leaving behind my home base in Munich to discover the Italian Alps and the Germanic cultural mixing that can only be found within its mountain ranges. We've explored fascinating towns, seen ancient mummies, hiked some of the best trails I've ever seen, and we even began to explore a myriad of spectacular castles for our third video. But that's when disaster struck. So here's the story of the worst travel day and disaster I have ever experienced. So I mean, it all started when we got to San Romadio. It was a really beautiful place. I obviously, I stand by everything said, I really enjoyed it. However, the new drone that I bought is a lot faster than I thought. And a bunch of kids were peering over my shoulder and just being really annoying. I looked away for a second. I wasn't paying as much attention. I got distracted. I crashed into a tree. It looked like this. What a rookie mistake. I, it's, you hate to see it happen, huh? To help mitigate the loss of the drone, I ran all the way back to the parking lot and got completely drenched. It's a lovely hike, but not a trail run, not for me. And Camille stayed with the app since the drone was working, just downloading all of the footage, because I mean, Camille's will get the footage, right? Then I drove the car all the way back to San Romadeo to pick up Camille and now all of our footage. And we thought maybe the day was gonna get back on track. So we headed to our next castle, somewhat unperturbed. So just trying to pave over that, it didn't really matter that we'd lost the drone as much for the second castle because they wouldn't have liked it if we were flying around there anyway. So we went to the second castle as planned. That castle was pretty fun, but because we forgot a bunch of our paperwork that we needed to get in and our appointment confirmation down in the car, we ended up having to walk up and down multiple times to get everything. And by the time we did that, a tour bus of kids arrived, taking what would have been a very tranquil and peaceful view of the museum to a bit of a mad dash. Uh, it wasn't a real big issue, but it was one of those things that added an extra 20 minutes. We again tried to make the best of it by hanging out on the still relatively peaceful southern lawn. And we even got a drink at the cafe, which really renewed and reinvigorated my spirits. It's all right, but we were rolling with the punches and trying our best. So we came up with a plan. So the plan we came up with was to go about 10 minutes, 20 minutes in total, both ways out of the way to a local Italian electronics store. Once we would get to the store, we'd buy a replacement drone and I would just try to ignore how annoying that was and then would continue for a glorious sunset at a castle ruin, which is open 24 hours. That way we could fly the drone again, get back into business and you guys might even be none the wiser. And that's where we end up here. Why are we still here then? Two reasons. One, they didn't have the drone. That was really annoying. The online website said they had it, but they didn't. I get that, that's fine. But that's not the real problem. Now, the real problem is that we came here, we decided that we'd just park up, I hit the button on the app for a stopover, and nothing. It didn't lock, it didn't do anything. It didn't even register that we were attempting to lock it at all. So, whatever. Camille, just stay by the car, I'll run in, get the drone, we can leave and we'll just start the engine and we'll worry about the other problems later. However, when I came back without the drone, the car also wouldn't start. Not only can we not do a stopover, we also can't start it. Camille's still on hold with the car company now. <sighs> it's taking forever, hence why I figured I'd just talk to you guys. I need something to take my mind off of this. Now, some of you out there might be rightfully confused. How has an app stopped you from being able to start a car? Well, this is a modern app-based rental. Think of it as the car equivalent to those bike share or scooter apps. You pick up an available car from the street, not a dealer, and the app unlocks the car and allows you to start the engine, which is exactly my problem. There's no manual override, only the app. This car requires either an internet connection or a Bluetooth connection, and neither are working properly for me. Though the damn thing can still stream podcasts, which is just so infuriating. It's like it's mocking me. Nothing quite like being stranded in the middle of nowhere. Can't lock the car because I can't lock it, and I can't turn it on because the app don't work. 
but uh, at least I've got the sultry tones of their support line. It makes you feel great, makes you feel taken care of, especially when they said they were going to call me back. Bye Mini Cooper. Hope you have a good night. I don't think I will. Okay, just gotta climb up to the trail. Another hour on the phone with support later and it's still broken. Nothing's changing, nothing's working. And that's when a guy comes to me and tells me that they're locking the parking lot. And if I don't leave in the next 30 seconds, I'm gonna be locked in too. Doesn't matter to me anymore because I can't move the car. And that's why we're abandoning the Mini Cooper we rented to drive down to the Sud Tudor in this random Trento parking lot. And now we're taking a train to Bolzano. Which leads us to where we are right now, Mad Dash scrambling to the train station for a train to Trento that will leave in about six minutes. That's gonna be fun. And from Trento, we'll take a train back to Bolzano. Should take about an hour. So much for a lovely dinner or another Bergruina, another castle ruin. We're not gonna get any of that. We'll be lucky if we can just get back to Bolzano. And also then we get to come back tomorrow to try to pick up the car, assuming it reconnects. And if it doesn't, then we'll have to figure out how we're gonna get back to Munich. That's gonna be even more fun. So forget the video we were gonna to film tomorrow. It was gonna be a brilliant one, by the way. But now I just don't know if we're gonna have time. I'm not trying to be too much of a downer, but right now it's really hard. Sometimes travel, especially when you're trying to do the stuff that we're trying to do, just really doesn't work out. And it's a good job we ran to the train station because those ticket machines are the slowest ticket machines on the planet. However, we are now officially on the platform to Trento with only a few minutes to spare, which we may as well get used to because we're only gonna have five minutes to make the connection in Bolzano. And don't forget to activate your ticket, which I just did three seconds ago. And here's the train. Knife's edge all day. And now we wait 25 minutes till the next train. At least it's air conditioned for the first time today. Oh my God, will we make it? No way. There's no way we'll make it. Oh. It's okay, I didn't think we were gonna make that train anyway. It should have left 10 minutes ago. It was 10 minutes delayed, obviously that's why it just left right now. But damn, if it had been 11 minutes delayed, we could have got on it and it was the Express to Bolzano that only takes 30 minutes. Instead, we have to wait for another 10 minute delay for the train that was supposed to be where that is. And that's the slow train to Bolzano. That'll take about an hour. That's okay. At this point, I'll just be happy to sit down and know that I'm going in the right direction. In fact, here it comes now. Let's get on this bad boy and let's get home. Okay, 51 minutes until Bolzano. Okay, so we've just woken up. It's the morning after. I'm sure you can forgive me for not talking to you between rushing onto that train and now, but it's the moment of truth. I need to call Cher now and they need to tell me what we're gonna do about this car. And honestly, I don't know which option I prefer. Either the car's reconnected and we have to take a two hour journey to go get it and then try to do the best to resuscitate the castle day trip. But honestly, am I gonna feel comfortable in that car anymore? I don't know. The other option of course being, we just abandon it. The car becomes their problem and we need to completely re-roll everything we're doing because what we were supposed to be doing today involved the car and getting back to Munich also involved the car, so. Wish me luck, but, uh, but I don't know what for. Right, so the news is in. The car is dead in the water and that means we don't have to go get it. Share now, it's all on them. We just need to have the rest of our vacation, just this time without a car. They've offered to pay for any rentals or trains that we might end up taking. It's Sunday though, so there are no rentals to be had. There's no way we can get a car today. Uh, so instead, we're just gonna keep it local, I guess, and do what we can and go back by train to Munich tomorrow. Um, I mean, that's the best that we can do. So we're gonna live with it and we're gonna have a good time. So now we know what we're gonna do with the vacation. What are we gonna do about all of these videos? I know that's the most pressing concern. Uh, well, I'm gonna go and film a bunch of the intros. Uh, I hate to break it to you, but sometimes with these kinds of problems, 
Things are shot out of order. That's just a cool little shooting fact for you. So we're gonna go do the Bolzano and we're gonna be doing this Echera intro. So that'll be fun. And you know what? I'm not going to let all of these problems scrap my Road of Castle videos. I still really stand by it. And what I found is that there's a castle about an hour's hike away from Bolzano. So I'm gonna change it to some gear, head out there, and we're gonna finish this video. It's not what I intended, but we're not gonna give up. As for this video about all the problems, well, for the rest of the day, I'm not gonna think about my problems. So I will see you tomorrow when we're checking out and rushing towards the train. All right, everybody, I think it's about time we finally go home. Cher now called this morning and asked if we wanted a car, but it would take them four hours to bring it to us and we'd just drive back. So I appreciate the thought, but nah, I think we're just gonna take the train. In all, I'm still pretty proud of this whole trip. In five days, we managed to film three videos that I hope are pretty good. I think we managed to get the castle one wrapped up. And I mean, that's pretty impressive, at least for me, because we're not daily vloggers. I'm trying to create really helpful and recommendable itineraries, and I really hope we manage to do that. But now though, there's nothing really left for me to do. If I had a car, maybe I'd go to some other places, but at this point, I think I'm tired and I'm ready to see my cats. So there's a 12.30 train, it'll be in half an hour. I'm gonna head back to Munich. Well, welcome back to Munich, everybody. It's, uh, it's been seconds for you and months for me. The seasons have changed, and if I'm being honest with you, it's mostly because I didn't really enjoy the thought of filming this video. It's not been my favorite, I'll tell you that. And I had a bit of adult paralysis in regards to, uh, I guess, figuring out the correct way to reimburse such a disaster. However, it is done and dusted, so kind of need to cap this off. What ended up happening? Well, of course, we did manage to take that train and get back to Munich. That's a little bit self-evident. Took first class tickets too. I figured I deserved a bit of comfort. And they have said that they're going to reimburse all of it. Now, I was reimbursed 80% immediately, which I thought was quite interesting. I got an invoice while we were still in Bolzano. However, I was still on the hook for about 130 euros of fees, taxes, and other little add-ons and extras that they put in. That felt a bit weird to me. I kind of just tacked that in with all of the other trains, tickets and issues that we had, put that in a packet and gave it to them. They said they will reimburse all of it. However, <laughs> they gave me two options. Option one, kind of classic. They'll give it to me kind of in a back statement and it will take six to eight weeks. So I can't exactly say I love the fact that I've floated them hundreds of euros at this point, but there you go, what are you gonna do? And then the last option, and this one, I'll be honest, I find it kind of offensive. They said that I could get the money back immediately if I rolled it into ShareNow credit, which would expire in 180 days. And as a little extra for my inconvenience, they'd tack on five euros, which if you're just gonna tack on five euros, don't tack on anything. Like it would be less offensive to say, we're just gonna reimburse you flat than it is, we'll give you a little icing on the cake. How about five euros? It expires in 180 days if you promise to use our service again. So yeah, I chose not to get the five euros and instead we'll be getting it back into my bank account because ultimately, will I still use share now in the future? Mm, not for anything that big, I'll tell you that. Maybe for day trips around Munich, something like the Weltenburg Abbey video, for instance. Yeah, I'd probably still use them for that because of the convenience factor. But anything more going international crossings, out into the mountains, out to the castle ruins. No way, mate. That's just not going to happen. At least definitely not anywhere far away from a train station. My word. And so, yeah, that's the dramatic conclusion. I got my money back flat. I did manage to get good train tickets, but overall it was still kind of a complete disaster and they really didn't kind of, well, own up to their word in actually giving me more and reimbursing for all of the inconvenience. They didn't do any of that. I think the people that I spoke to on the phone were all genuinely fantastic. They were all super friendly, but kind of the moment I got back to Munich and it became, you know, in writing on email, I don't know, it got a little bit colder and a little bit less helpful if you catch my drift. And so that's it. I hope you've liked it. I've never vlogged before. We've never edited one of these before. So let me know if you think it was all right. If my misery was well worth your entertainment, let me know. But most importantly, if you could check out the Dolomite series because I'm still really proud of them. Let me know, did we manage to actually make a good guide and series despite all of these problems? I would appreciate it if you gave them a watch. I'll see you in the next video.